Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In this week's video we're going to be taking a look at using free virtual amplifiers along with EQ and to create a great rock sound in a track that I've recorded. Now I've got a small snippet in front of me and we're going to go through from stage one we've got DI guitars left and right and we're going to add each element in and I'm going to show you the end result you can get with this quick method. Well let's take a look at all that right now. So let's kick this video off by just having a listen to what we've got available to us. Now I've done the bass, I've EQ'd that, I've dropped some drums in there, there's no EQ on there, and I've just got DI instruments left and right for the guitars. These are recorded directly via my interface, straight into Reaper, nothing applied to them. If you take a look at the channel strips on the first and second channels, you can see we've got nothing on there, no EQ, no effects or anything, just the DI signal. So let's take a listen to that first of all, see what we're working with, and then we'll start building up our tracks by using these free virtual amplifiers and amp sims and so on. So as you can hear, it is simply two DI signals for the guitar left and right. The bass has been set up, the drums, there's no EQ or anything on the drums, they are just effectively adjusted slightly for levels, but other than that they are just a direct MIDI recording. So what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to focus on the first guitar, we're going to set everything up in there, and then we'll take a look at the second guitar, and then finally we'll take a look at how we can EQ those to make sure that they sit perfectly in the mix, and we get rid of most of the unwanted frequencies ready to start doing the final mix towards the end of a project. So to start off with, let's solo out the left guitar. And we're just going to come down to our effects browser and we're going to go through and choose the various elements we're going to work with. To start off with, I want to put a Tube Screamer, so we're going to use the TSE808, which is again a free, free plugin. So we're just going to drag that up, drop it on the channel. We've got that instance of that there then, so let's just bring that over from my other screen. Next up, we're going to come in and we're going to choose the amplifier model we're going to work with. Now, like I say, these are all going to be free. Nothing in this is going to cost you anything in this particular section of the video. So let's start off with by using the LE456, which is based upon an angle amplifier. And we bring that in as well. And then finally, we're going to come in and we're going to choose which of the impulse response loaders we're going to work with. Now, I'm going to work with the Mercurial Cab version 3. This is a great little impulse response loader and it's a very simple one to work with but there are various other ones available and I recommend taking a look at my video on using impulse responses and using these with the guitars. Okay so let's switch back over to the mixer let's make sure we get everything in the right order so our channel strip sequence is so far we've got the TSE808 tube screamer in front of the amplifier which then outputs the signal to the mercurial cab. So let's put those in the right order so we can see what we're working with and let's start dialing in the first tone on our first guitar strip. Now one of the tricks when you're a guitarist and you're using a Tube Screamer at the front of your amplifier is to just use the trick where you use no drive to influence any additional gain to your amplifier. You just use the volume and the tone and, and the actual TSE-808 or the Tube Screamer on its own just to tighten up the signal ever so slightly. It just gives you a nice tight guitar tone. So we're going to leave that and set the default no drive Tone set to 12 o'clock and the volume set to 12 o'clock. And we'll just make sure that the quality is set to high. Next up, we're going to come in and we're going to just make sure that we've got no uh, voicings affecting the sound via the Mercurial cabs. We'll set that to be input tuning of none. We'll leave it on the SM57 and I'm going to use the position to be the edge because that kind of gives a thicker, fuller tone. And we get rid of some of that fizz, that natural fizz you get with distorted guitars. So let's go to the 456 now, let's start playing our track and let's take a look at what we can do to get the tone that we want dialed in. So let's hit play, so we get the first track and let's start going for seconds.
Okay, that's a pretty good starting point. We'll EQ that later on. But we've got the first one in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just bring in the other tracks except for the, the right guitar. So we'll listen to the guitar mixed in with the bass and the drums. And just take a listen to what that sounds like to start off with. Okay, that's looking pretty good. If you're wondering why I was adjusting the volume there, I was just checking to make sure that we weren't going over around the minus 18 dB, just so I could make sure that everything is sitting at a nice level to give us headroom when we later on look at mixing. So there's our first guitar track done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the second guitar track and we're going to start setting that up the way we like. So on the second track, we're going to use a fairly similar setup, but we're going to use a different amplifier. Now, you're perfectly entitled to use the same amplifier and just tweak the EQ or use exactly the same. But you will tend to find that if you introduce a second amplifier into the mix with a different tone, you'll get a fuller, fatter sound. But obviously, as with everything to do with music, set it up the way you like it. So I'm going to keep the setup exactly the same except for the amplifier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the Tube Screamer, the Mercurial Cab over, and then finally we're just going to come into the Effects Browser, and we're going to choose a different amplifier. So I'm going to stick to the Lapoo amplifiers, and this time I'm going to go for the Lecto. So for those guitarists out there, they're going to know that the Lecto is effectively based upon a rectifier by Mesa Boogie. So let's bring that in. Let's bring back up our mixer so we can make sure our levels are all good. Make sure that the Mercurial Cab is the right position, so that's last in the signal chain that we've got there now. So we've got that soloed out. Let's take a listen to what we have and then start working with the tone on that to get it where we want it to be. I think that's sounding pretty good as a starting point. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play the entire track back with both guitars in place so you can hear the entire thing. And then we're going to go on and finally EQ both those guitars to get rid of any unwanted frequencies that we don't really want to have in our tone. So let's take a listen to that now. So this is where we are right now. Let's just hit play and take a listen to that. That's sounding pretty good so far, so let's just go in and take a look at the EQ and how we can just get rid of those unwanted horrible frequencies. So I'm just going to come down to my effects browser and I'm going to use the standard re -Q. So we're just going to drop an instance of that on our first guitar track. And we're going to keep a four band EQ is, is fine for this. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we get no low frequencies that influence any of the actual other instruments that are going to be used, the bass and the kick drum. So if we play that back, we can take a look at any of the lower end frequencies that are going to be in the guitar track, and then we can scoop those out quite easily. So just keep an eye on everything that sort of sits around this 200, right the way down to 50 hertz and lower. Those are frequencies that we don't really want to have too much of, because they're going to sort of encroach upon the bass and the kick drum. So watch the EQ. So 
So anything lower than 50 hertz is in the sub bass frequencies. And they're the kind of thing that guitars really don't need to be in. Even bass kind of was struggling there. If you don't have a sub or things like that, you're going to find that most speakers are not going to ha actually hear those responses. And for this kind of music, you don't really need that. That's more for EDM, electronic dance music, where they really deal with some sub bass frequencies. Unless you're using bass drops, then you can safely cut that out for most of the instruments that you're going to work with. So we've just added in a high pass filter to cut those. I'm basing it around about the 90 hertz. You can adjust this to taste based upon exactly what you're looking for. And you will find that you'll probably come back in and adjust this more than once as you start to build up all the various different elements of your track. The same kind of thing goes for the high frequency. We don't really want anything up around the 20k mark. So what we can do is we'll take a look at the EQ again, we'll see where the frequencies are, and then we'll take a look at cutting things that we don't really need to have in there just to allow room for our, our vocals and any of the higher instruments like cymbals and things. So let's hit play and take a look. So keep an eye on this 10k plus and see what's up there. You'll probably find there's not a lot there because guitars with this kind of thing where we're dealing with low end riffs, there's not going to be much up there. So let's just hit play and take a look. So just to make sure, what we're going to do is we're just going to click and we're going to put in a low pass filter. Now we're going to tweak that because obviously I don't want to cut off too much of the high frequency, but you know, you're going to have to play it by ear and you're going to have to get used to what you're trying to do. And like I say, you will come back in from time to time and adjust and tweak these when needed. Okay, so the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start scanning the frequency range just to find any, any frequencies that are kind of harsh. And you'll tend to find up around the 2 to 3K, maybe even up around as high as 5K, you're going to start to have fizzy, horrible tones up in there that are kind of, you don't notice them until you actually start to strip them out or emphasize them. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to find the frequencies that I think are detracting from the tone of this guitar and then we'll take a look at boosting them so we can hear them to scan around and then we'll drop those out by a few dB to compensate for those horrible tones. So let's take a look at that. So as you can hear, when we A, B the EQ section on there, you can see there's quite a considerable difference. There are tones in there that are quite harsh, fizzy tones that when you remove them and then you A, B it, you can suddenly hear those frequencies really detracting from the overall audio. So I'm going to quickly run through the second guitar track. I'm going to do the same kind of thing on there. Then once I've done that, I come back in, show you the difference, and we'll A, B between the two of those. And we also take a listen to it in the mix and out of the mix. So... Bear with me, I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to go make the EQ settings on the second guitar track. 
Okay, so I've EQ'd the second guitar, and as you can see, they're fairly similar in the frequency responses that need to be adjusted, but the reality is they're using different amplifiers. We've got some slightly different settings on there, different EQ settings on the amplifiers themselves, so that's going to influence the tone, and obviously the characteristics of the amplifiers are going to influence the tone as well. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly play this track, just the guitars left and right, and I'm going to AB the EQ on and off, and then I'm going to put it into the mix so you can listen to the overall effect with this EQ applied to those free amp sims. So let's take a listen. So hopefully what you can see is there's quite a considerable difference there in the tone and it sits in the mix better when you EQ those high frequencies and those harsh fizzy tones out. They're the kind of guitar tones that you probably wouldn't listen to on their own but when you put them into the mix in the context of an entire song it's surprising how cutting those high low frequencies and those fizzy areas that you don't really want in the EQ how everything sits in a much more balanced fashion. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you an insight into how good these free amp sims, these free effects pedals, and these free impulse responses can be, and how they can sit really, really well in a track. So you can see we've spent no money on guitar amp sims and things. We used a stock EQ, and we've ended up with, even though it's only taken us a short amount of time, quite a decent sounding mix. So if you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. If you want exclusive content not available anywhere else, please go over to reapertv.co.uk and subscribe to our mailing list and take a look at our website where there's exclusive content. Well, until next time, happy mixing.